In this video, we'll be taking a look at three college football games happening on October 12, 2024, and providing you with free team picks and total picks for each one of those games. So six picks in total. Welcome back to Cash Out Sports. Let's dive right into it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and to click the bell icon to get notified as soon as these videos get released so that you have more time to plan out your bets as we provide these videos on a daily basis. I can guarantee that you'll have all the important information that you'll need on these three college football games after fully watching this video or thing before we start if you would like to gain access to our best exclusive sports picks to take your journey to the next level then check out our patreon in the link down below where we offer our best single picks parley picks and much more now let's get started South Carolina versus Alabama, two Southeastern Conference programs that suffered disappointing losses last week will face off, both eager to turn things around as they take the field in Alabama. The South Carolina Gamecocks will hit the road to square off against the seventh-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide on Saturday afternoon. South Carolina comes into the game following a rough 27-3 defeat at home against the 12th-ranked Ole Miss Rebels, where they failed to cover the spread as 10-and-a-half point underdogs. Meanwhile, Alabama was stunned in a 40 to 35 loss on the road to Vanderbilt, despite being favored by 23 points. Historically, the Crimson Tide has dominated this matchup, holding an 11-4 advantage in the all-time series, including a 47-23 victory in their most recent meeting back on September 14, 2019. South Carolina has struggled mightily this season, especially in their two matchups against ranked Southeastern Conference opponents. They squandered a winnable game at home against LSU and were soundly defeated by Ole Miss last weekend. Now, they face the daunting task of heading to Tuscaloosa, a place where they've only won once in nine tries, with their lone victory dating back to 2004. To make matters worse, they'll be going up against an Alabama team that is likely to be fired up after last week's shocking loss to Vanderbilt. This defeat came just one week after Alabama knocked off Georgia to claim the number one ranking. Given the Crimson Tide's home field advantage and South Carolina's inconsistency at the quarterback position, Alabama should be poised to take full control of this game. Alabama enters this game looking to rebound from one of the most shocking upsets in recent memory. The Crimson Tide never held the lead in their loss to Vanderbilt, which followed their impressive victory over Georgia just the week before. Meanwhile, South Carolina has lost two of their last three games, and they struggled offensively last week, managing only three points at home against Ole Miss. This game seems set up for an angry Alabama team to show up in full force, especially with the game being played on their home turf. Given their strong motivation to bounce back and the weaknesses in South Carolina's lineup, the Alabama Crimson Tide to win and cover the spread as favorites is our full game side pick. When looking at the total for this matchup, South Carolina has seen the under hit in three of their five games this season. In their only road game of the year, the Gamecocks and Kentucky combined for 37 points, staying under the 40 and a half point line. On the other hand, Alabama has gone over the total in four of their five games this season. The Crimson Tide's offense has flourished at home, going over the total in two of their three home games, with each contest featuring at least 58 points. This game is set to feature two Southeastern Conference offenses squaring off, and there's a good chance we'll see plenty of scoring. Alabama has posted at least 35 points in every game this season, scoring 41 or more in four of those games. Their average of 45 points per game ranks 8th in the nation. South Carolina, though struggling offensively last week, has scored at least 23 points in all but one game this season, and they've put up 31 points in three of those contests. Alabama's defense has allowed at least 34 points in their last two games, and while Georgia's 34 points may not be surprising, Vanderbilt's 40-point output last week raises concerns about the Crimson Tide's ability to shut down opposing offenses. Given these factors, South Carolina should be able to contribute to the scoreboard. The over has hit in Alabama's last three games and in two of South Carolina's last three, with Alabama likely to be highly motivated and ready to rack up points over the projected total as our full game total pick. Clemson vs. Wake Forest the college football season rolls on this Saturday with an exciting Atlantic Coast Conference matchup between the 10th-ranked Clemson Tigers and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Clemson has historically dominated this rivalry, boasting a commanding 71-17-1 record against Wake Forest. The Tigers have also won the last 15 meetings between the two teams, including a hard-fought 17-12 victory in Clemson last year. This weekend's game will take place at Allegacy Federal Credit Union Stadium in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. 
The Demon Deacon's recent upset over the NC State Wolfpack served as a timely reminder for Clemson and head coach Dabo Swinney that in college football, anything can happen on any given Saturday. While Wake Forest looks to build momentum from that victory, Clemson has certainly been put on notice not to allow the Demon Deacons to gain any steam. Clemson has started the season strong with a 4-1 record, bouncing back from a Week 1 loss to the Georgia Bulldogs by stringing together four consecutive wins. Quarterback Cade Klubnik has steadily developed into the player that Winnie had envisioned, showing great command by minimizing turnovers while delivering big plays. So far, Klubnik has thrown for 1,219 yards with 14 touchdowns and just two interceptions. If he can pass for 261 yards this weekend, he will move into the top 10 in Clemson history for career passing yards. On the opposite side, Wake Forest quarterback Hank Bachmeyer is also closing in on a major milestone. He needs only 24 more passing yards to become the seventh active football bowl subdivision quarterback to Pass 10,000 career passing yards. Although Wake Forest pulled off an impressive upset last week, I don't foresee them continuing that trend against Clemson. The Tigers have simply been too dominant in this matchup, winning the last 15 meetings, with the most recent four victories all by margins of 14 points or more. Clemson holds a talent advantage at nearly every position, and the Tigers are fully aware that they need to stay sharp as they push through the remainder of their schedule. Their only remaining ranked opponent is number 22 Pittsburgh, so a slip up or poor stretch could jeopardize their hopes of making the playoffs. In many ways, Wake Forest win last week may have actually benefited Clemson, serving as a reminder to stay focused and avoid underestimating any opponent. Clemson enters Saturday's game on a four-game winning streak, with each of those victories coming by at least 16 points. The Tigers have been solid on both offense and defense this season, and they should be well equipped to handle Wake Forest without too much difficulty. While the Demon Deacons managed to pull off a win against NC State last week, their performance in the second and third quarters was subpar, and they had allowed a staggering 81 points in the two games prior to that contest. Given the struggles of Wake's defense, which has had difficulty making stops, and their offense, which will face a formidable Clemson defense, it's hard to envision Wake Forest keeping pace in this game. One victory over an inconsistent and injury-plagued NC State team doesn't change the overall outlook for Wake Forest. Meanwhile, Clemson has been playing at a high level throughout the season, with their only blemish being the loss to Georgia. In my opinion, Wake Forest simply doesn't have the depth or talent to compete with Clemson for a full 60 minutes. For that reason, the Clemson Tigers to win and cover the spread as favorites is our full game side pick. Offensively, I expect Clemson to have plenty of success in this game. They will be facing a Wake Forest defense that ranks 112th in the nation, giving up an average of 35 and a half points per game against football bowl subdivision opponents. Clemson's offense has been clicking, averaging 39 points per game this season, and I wouldn't be surprised if they push their score into the 40s in this contest. On the other hand, Clemson's defense raises some concerns. They haven't been as dominant as in previous years, especially in past defense, where they rank 72nd nationally, allowing an average of 220.4 passing yards per game. This makes Wake Forest quarterback Hank Bachmeyer a potential threat to put up 28 or more points on the Tigers this weekend. With nearly 10,000 career passing yards under his belt, Bachmeyer has the experience and skill to challenge Clemson's defense. Wake Forest's offense, which averages 31 points per game should be capable of putting up a decent fight. Given these factors, I expect a higher scoring game over the projected total is our full game total pick. Washington versus Iowa. The Washington Huskies, sitting at 4-2, are set to square off against the 3-2 Iowa Hawkeyes this sat in what will be the Huskies' first ever Big Ten Conference game against Iowa. Washington has already made a strong impression in their inaugural Big Ten season, coming off a notable 27-17 victory over the Michigan Wolverines last week. This win gave them a 2-1 record within the conference. The Huskies will aim to continue their momentum as they head into Iowa City, where they will face an Iowa team still recovering from a 35-7 loss to Ohio State the previous week. Iowa currently holds a 1-1 record in conference play and will look to bounce back in front of their home crowd. A pattern has emerged in the revamped Big Ten, where the teams recently integrated from the Pac-12 have struggled when playing on the road against traditional Big Ten programs while performing much better at home. For instance, USC recently suffered defeats at Michigan and Minnesota, and UCLA also lost on the road to Penn State. Washington, too, has already fallen in an away game to Rutgers. Oregon stands as the exception to this trend, as they are ranked 
ranked third nationally and have been playing at a higher level than the other former Pac-12 teams. Washington's win against number 10 Michigan was impressive, but it's crucial to remember their road loss to Rutgers just the week prior. In that game, Rutgers dominated on the ground, rushing for 184 yards, with Kyle Moningai contributing 132 yards and a touchdown. Michigan found similar success against Washington's defense, with their top two running backs combining for over 140 rushing yards. This trend is concerning for Washington as they now face Iowa, a team built around a powerful offensive line and the second leading rusher in the nation, Caleb Johnson. Johnson, who averages 154 rushing yards per game, will likely take advantage of Washington's weaker run defense, creating opportunities for quarterback Cade McNamara to exploit with play-action passes. While Washington's defense has been exceptional against the pass, allowing only 125 passing yards per game, their vulnerability lies in defending the run. This plays directly into Iowa's strengths, as the Hawkeyes embody the traditional Big Ten style of football, pounding the ball on the ground to the tune of 223 rushing yards per game. Iowa will look to control the tempo and wear down Washington with their run game, much like Rutgers did earlier in the season. Being far from home, Washington may struggle to establish their offense, making it difficult to replicate their success from last week. While this matchup promises to be competitive, Iowa's edge in the run game and their tougher strength of schedule should lead them to victory. Given the trend of West Coast teams faltering in Big Ten territory, Iowa is expected to continue this pattern with a strong showing. So the Iowa Hawkeyes to win and cover the spread as favorites is our full game side pick. Washington's introduction to the Big Ten has come with low-scoring games, as seen in each of their first three conference matchups. Two of those three games hit the under, with the only exception being last week's 44-point game against Michigan, which narrowly went over the posted total of 40 points. However, this week's contest presents a different challenge as the Huskies will be playing on the road in a much more hostile environment, which could disrupt their offensive rhythm and lower the overall score. Although Iowa's offense has been scoring more points on average this season compared to previous years, they are likely to lean heavily on their running game due to Washington's strong pass defense. Iowa's ability to control the clock and dictate the pace of the game will be crucial. The Hawkeyes will likely aim to replicate the same game plan they used against Minnesota, focusing on dominating the line of scrimmage with their run game and forcing their opponents to play from behind. In that game, Caleb Johnson rushed for 206 yards, a performance that was not a one-off. He has surpassed 170 rushing yards in three of his last four games, with his only sub-100-yard game coming against Ohio State's elite defense, where he still managed 86 yards. Iowa's strategy of sustaining long, clock-chewing drives while avoiding risky throws from McNamara should help keep Washington's offense off the field. On the other side, Washington also boasts a strong ground attack, with Jonah Coleman averaging an impressive 6.7 yards per carry and accumulating over 600 rushing yards this season. The Huskies have also been incorporating freshman quarterback Demon Williams Jr who is more inclined to run the ball than pass at this stage in his development. This game is shaping up to be another typical Big Ten grind, much like Washington's earlier matchup against Rutgers. The Huskies have gone under the projected total in five of their six games this season, and with Iowa's ability to slow the pace and control possession, it's likely that this game will also stay under the total. Therefore, under the projected total is our full game total pick. That's all for now, so if you have any other games you would like reviewed, then leave a comment down below with the game you would like analyzed, subscribe to our channel, leave a like on this video, and we'll get to it as soon as we possibly can. We would also love to hear your opinion on the picks presented to you in this video, whether you agree or disagree with them, so leave a comment down below and do let us know.